Do I hate OpenAI? No, but I do feel pretty deceived. I mean, I get it. GPT-3 was expensive to train, DALI-2 was expensive to train, and GPT-4 was... Well, you get it. So with that in mind, you might think it's fair that OpenAI doesn't want to open source those models. And I'd say that's fair enough if they didn't pretend to be more open than they actually are. I mean, look at stuff like this. Our biggest and most powerful language models are too dangerous for normal people to have access to. So we'll only give you access if you pay, or Microsoft can pay and they can give it out for free. Oh, and if you looked closely in that screenshot, you probably noticed that this conversation started back when GPT-2 was still relevant. That just doesn't sit right with me. OpenAI could just admit that open sourcing models makes it harder for them to make money off them, and they want to make money off them. And I would get that. They're a company, and they just do still do pretty cool stuff. Um, their OpenAI Whisper is an open model that's great for transcription, and the blog posts they do are really important for letting normal people understand the developments happening in AI. They're just not as open as they initially claim to be. And so I think it's important that people know that you can get more open AI than with open AI. That could be through cloud services, like what OpenAI offers with ChatGPT, but just by different companies, or by actually getting models and running them on your own hardware. Important to know though, all AI output is not to be trusted to be shown to other people before you review it yourself. This is relevant to OpenAI, obviously, but probably more so to models that you're running yourself since they tend to have less safeguards. Also, when I mention open sourcing models, either previously or after this in this video, I realized I made a mistake. When I say open sourcing, I do mean that it would be nice if they open sourced them, but I would also appreciate at least just releasing them, even if they weren't open source or under an open source license. You might disagree with that, and I would prefer open sourcing, but that's another thing to know. There is a difference between those things. And now that I've brought up licensing, it's important to know that many of these models aren't licensed with your typical GPL style open source license, instead trying to bake ethics into the law that, that, that you agree to follow. Which, okay, is it fair that you shouldn't do these things? Yeah, but is that how licenses normally work? And more importantly, is that legally binding? We're not sure yet. With all that in mind though, and the fact that laws around AI are being debated for change or even just being made in the first place all the time, uh, let's take a look at what you can do. The areas I'm familiar with are language models and image generation models. So if you look at the chapters below, those are the two we'll be looking at. Also, I apologize that I'm shiny, it's really warm. For language models, things are changing all the time. Llama leaked from Meta in March, and then what really kicked off like open source AI development from there was the fact that I think it was Stanford showed that you can further fine tune that for proper chat GPT style interactions with their model, Alpaca. There's GPT for All's desktop app, which looks like the chat GPT style interface, but it lets you use it with open source models, which one of those might be Vicuña, which, sticking with this kind of same animal theme, is like Alpaca, still based on Llama, but way better. And then there, you could also be using GPT for all J, which instead of being based off Llama, is actually based off GPT-J, which is under the Apache license, which means you can use this one for commercial business purposes, which you can't do with any of them based off Llama. Unless you're going to use Open Llama, which is something that's being worked on now, which is one that you could use commercially. There are other tools like just raw llama.cpp, which is an app, uh, well, a program uh, that is often the kind of base foundation of how other like GUI applications work, and it's not that hard to um, to make work. It gives you finer grain controls, and it works in the terminal. There's basically something for everyone. But I'm going to stop mentioning specific models now, because firstly, not to date this video, because things are changing all the time, and because you should probably go out and do your own research. Something that you should know when doing research is the number after the model. They'll all end in a number. And giving you a technical explanation for that is probably worthless because I won't do that good a job explaining it, so if you want a better explanation, go elsewhere, but I can explain the effects of it. Basically, any good language model, at least right now, is going to have a number in the high ones to the potentially dozens of billions. And basically, the higher the number, the harder it is to run, but the smarter it is. And right now, seemingly the sweet spot is somewhere between 13 and 60 billion. And like by, by sweet spot, I mean kind of the, the, the best trade-off between performance and 
smartness. Llama.cpp isn't particularly hard to get running, but it's a terminal app, and even though I'm fine with that, for the sake of the Windows users, I would like people not to be in the terminal. I just want to give something... GPT for All gives you an easier experience that doesn't involve the terminal. It just looks like a normal app. And it's a very familiar interface to ChatGPT. You've even got the, the, the chats at the side, and it's the same color scheme. And so uh, GPT for All is what I'm going to re be recommending to people. It's also all cross-platform. The website only says Ubuntu, but it, it works on Fedora and Arch and other distros too. And it works on Mac and Windows as well. Before I go through that, I do want to say that if you don't have a computer, then you can use Hugging Chat or the Open Assistant Chat interface that you have to sign up for as just a, a straight up replacement for ChatGPT. So still, nothing will run on your own hardware, but you can still use that if you don't have hardware capable of running an LLM. As for GPT for All's installer though, it only downloads about 300 megabytes of stuff for the app itself. It's it's fast, it's, it's not really very hard to understand. And then when you get there, you get the privacy options that you can say yes or no to, it's just two choices, and then you get to download from a list of models. You can also add other models that you want later, which I'll talk about. Though, something you should know, even though this is open source software, you really should read the privacy policy, um, because it's it's very short, it's very to the point, it, it's, you know, the, there's no jargon, it's very easy to understand, but you should know what you're picking. But once you've got it running, you can straight up disconnect the computer's internet connection and the model will keep running exactly the same. It also supports analyzing local documents, you can do different chats like I mentioned earlier, it all just pretty much works and it just seems like a pretty good app. Plus a big bonus for me is the fact that it also looks like a regular regular app, it's not a web UI. If you'd prefer a web UI, there's the Ooga Booga web, web UI which is you can get more fine control over things, but I think generally people would be happy with the GPT for all, and I really like that it's not a web UI. <laughs> it uses your CPU, not your GPU, and we'll explain that a bit later, but with CPU, you can go into the settings and pick the number of cores. By default, it only uses four threads, so that's two cores of my six core processor. I did up it, but I'm going to be honest, I didn't see a performance difference, so your mileage may vary. Also, no, it doesn't use a GPU, but I think that's fine because things are generally still fast enough on CPU and most people do not have a GPU with enough VRAM to be running any kind of decent model anyway. And as a general rule for a modern decent processor, again, there this is not a, the, the BL and end-all, just look at actual benchmarks, but generally you can get very quick responses from 7 billion parameter models, decently quick responses from 13 billion, and usable but not that fast ones from 30 billion models. And again, that's just a, a general rule that, that I can seem to follow, but there are other things, there are the Q2, Q4, Q5, Q8 versions of each model, don't worry about that if you're just getting into it. You can mess with things later, but gpt for all has suggestions for you that should work okay to start with, then you can do some more once you've seen what's available. And you can run any other type of model that says it's a GGML type model. You can just go to the gpt for all downloads and see the path, the, 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 the file directory that models are being downloaded to, Download a model, typically from the bloke on Hugging Face is Fine, and put into that folder, restart the app, and it should appear. If you want to know what's best, there's the Hugging Face Open LLM leaderboard, and also a Can AI Code leaderboard that ranks these based on performance in benchmarks. And I highly encourage Sing if you can get one of these to work instead of G ChatGPT if you can. But I'm not going to shill for the open source models. They are, I, I don't think there is a single one that touches GPT-4 in any benchmark that I've seen, and especially not in, you know, all of the different benchmarks at once. There's some hope with Microsoft's Orca model, which might get released, we don't know, but it, there are rumors about that being really good. Um, but still, e even, even the paper released around that, nothing touches GPT-4, and only some things are kind of starting to approach ChatGPT, like GPT 3.5. Nothing is as good as ChatGPT in terms of raw performance, but if you can get by with a model that's less smart, it would be nice if you'd be able to use something open source, and so you might want to investigate that. Now, image generation. I know that I started the language section saying that for language models, things are changing all the time. And while that's also true in the image generation scene, things are a bit more stable here. Um, 
it, it's true that just with language models, most things are, are based off Llama. Most things with image generation are based off stable diffusion. It's also true that with language models, we see a lot more entirely independent other successful things. Like we're seeing Falcon is a recent uh, big model that is completely nothing to do with any previously existing models. Whereas, and, and also, nobody really uses raw Llama. Whereas it's pretty common to actually stick with the base stable diffusion versions here, although that's not to say that there aren't fine-tuned ones. There's Dreamlike Photoreal that has, uh, that's trained on higher resolution images, or at least better at generating higher resolution images. Redshift Diffusion, which is trained to make everything look like a 3D render. There's, what was the other one? Uh, Open Journey, which is uh, based off J images made by Midjourney because Midjourney is a closed model that you need to pay to get access to and so people try to recreate that style with a model based on stable diffusion that's open. And beyond that, there are even big changes between the individual versions of stable diffusion. For example, between version 1.5 and 2, there were a few good things. The The model maybe got more technically proficient, and the data set became fully open source as well. So now everything is open source rather than just the model itself. But the data set is also generally regarded to be worse. Here are some good comparisons from Assembly AI, along with a few weird edge cases like, hey, you can see the water looks kind of weird. But then, how do you go about running one of those models? Don't worry, there are online services, which is good because if you have a computer that has a GPU with less than 6 gigs of VRAM, you're probably not going to have any luck running it locally. Maybe 4 is just about passable, but any less than that, it's not going to fit onto the GPU. And then, if you try using your CPU, you basically just can't. And to prove that, I benchmarked it. So, with a 6600 XT on Linux, with just some set settings that I keep for the rest of the benchmarks, I got about 4.15 iterations per second without a live preview, and 3.5 with. That sounds pretty decent. So, with the CPU then, I got about 10... 10? That's nearly three times faster. No. Not 10 iterations per second, 10 seconds per iteration, closer to 9 without the live preview. That is much, much slower. Actually, doing the maths, it's about 37 and a half times slower on a decent CPU than a lower mid-range GPU. Thanks to that, if you've just got a CPU, you're probably going to want to take advantage of the Hugging Faces feature that lets you try out image generation models on that page. But if you think you do have a good enough computer, then the program I'm going to recommend to get this going for you is the Easy Diffusion Web UI. I picked it because it does let you get more in-depth than just the basics, but it shouldn't be too complicated to understand, and the, and the UI looks pretty good and stuff, and it's pretty easy to get if you just want to make an image quickly, but if you want to mess with it, you still can. There are native apps, because like I, like I mentioned with GPT for all on the previous one, I prefer native apps, but there aren't really any that, that, that I know about that work on Linux as well with GPU support and stuff, and that actually run the model itself. Like there's Imagine... <laughs> I'm not even going to try making that sound French. Um, there's that for desktop Linux that looks super nice and you know it's made for GNOME, it looks really native, but it doesn't actually run the model. It either talks to a cloud service, so it's good if you're using a cloud service, or you have to separately run uh, a web server that's hosting the, the, the model separately that it connects to, so it's not quite what I'm looking for. Plus, unlike Imagine, um, it's not just Linux, it's Linux, Mac, and Windows, it supports NVIDIA, Apple, AMD, and potentially Intel Arc through the fact that um, AMD support is done through the open source drivers that potentially Intel Arc can also talk to. That might just be a Linux thing though, so you'll have to see. But it supports basically all the GPUs, and you can do it on a CPUs. It should work pretty much anywhere. And something that's pretty nice is the situation, by my understanding, with image generation as compared to text generation, is that open source really isn't that much worse than the best of the closed source models. There definitely are situations where the closed ones outperform them, and maybe it's just because classifying an image as good or not good is that's kind of hard to quantify whereas with text it's also hard but potentially a bit easier there are easier benchmarks for that the open source models are generally accepted to be good <laughs> like they are a standard that is not a problem they're not like a, a worse knockoff of the better ones they are actually very good 
And so I don't foresee it being particularly difficult to switch over if you were using DALI 2 or something, though there are other tools that integrate more deeply with AI models that there don't currently seem to be equivalents for, like Photoshop's generative th fill and things like that. Actually, there is in painting, in painting and stuff, but nothing quite so simple. And there's more. People have gotten these models not just running on beefy computers or servers in the cloud, but laptops, phones, and even Raspberry Pis. There's a whole new category of tinkering that's opened up when you can run AI on your own devices that's pretty powerful. Subscribe and like if you think I've earned it. Um, discuss what you think about this in the comments or the Discord and Matrix servers, and bye.